Welcome to Part-Time Film School. My name is Jacob. In this video, we're gonna talk about three lessons that filmmakers, including Hollywood, can learn from the making of the creator. Okay, so lesson number one. We can start to rethink the equipment that we use when we make feature films. So typical Hollywood movie is gonna go top of the line as far as they can get because they want the highest production value. And that completely makes sense. So they're gonna run out and they're gonna go get some version of the Alexa. In some cases, if they're doing something that's really special effects heavy, they may go for a red. And some filmmakers like you know, Sony cameras, so they might go something along the lines of like a, a Venice or something like that. But that's basically what feature films are being made of. It's an airy, it's a red, it's a Venice. Now what Gareth Edwards went out and did is he, he, he went to the very bottom of the cinema line from Sony and he went and he shot with one, a $4,000-ish camera called the Sony FX3. And he went with really simple technical things. He had a very simple, inexpensive external recorder, a very simple stabilization system. There's, there's shots that you can see of him being rolled around on like these little carts. Like they didn't have a big dolly system set up. They had a really, really low footprint, but they were able to go make a really, really great looking movie with really simple lighting equipment, really affordable, even entry level, a camera equipment. Even the lenses aren't too far out of the range of of a filmmaker, you know, who's doing indie projects or making commercials or music videos. So what can we learn from that? Well, Hollywood can probably save some money by thinking outside the box and not just automatically going like, the only box is airy, let's just check it. But beyond that, there might be some great options and those options may open up new opportunities for you, just like they did for Gareth Edwards. All right, lesson number two, rethink crew size. This is something that small indies like me do anyway. When I made my, my first feature Ace of Hearts on crew, we had two, three, maybe four people working crew on a given shoot day. There were almost always more actors on set than there were crew. In fact, oftentimes we looked around and we realized, wait, we didn't have someone to do sound. So I'm directing while holding the boom mic, watching the performance and, and trying to, to listen to sound at the same time. Now, it's not always ideal to do that, but having a smaller footprint saved the production of the creator money and made it easier for them to get into different locations. They didn't have to shut down entire beaches so that they could shoot a scene. They, they weren't taking up very much space and it didn't mind, they didn't care that there were people in the background, so they just went and they shot. And they were able to do a lot with a relatively small crew because they knew they were going to be able to cut together the story that they needed to tell and do all the special effects work later. And that brings us to lesson three. Gareth Edwards, his background before he started directing movies was in effects work. He, he understood how to think like someone who was doing post. And so he shoots with that in mind. And so one of the things that they did differently on the creator is they went and they shot the entire movie, they edited the entire movie, and then they started the special effects work. What this did for special effects is they essentially just had to work with a locked, locked picture, a locked image, and they were essentially just painting special effects on top of it, right? And so one of the, the effects that, that's happening throughout the movie is all the AI characters have this like see-through like circle thing going on there. None of that was done practically. That was all done after the, after the fact with ILM, which is really good at what they do. And small indies like me, there's no way we're gonna do something like that. But the principle is still the same. If there's some simple special effects work, we can go back to the old school days of just painting onto the image. So if, if I, so I have, a, I have a movie coming up where I have a nuclear explosion that goes off, right? We're not gonna actually blow anything up. And I've been thinking over and over again, you know, what can I do? It's like, I just need a still shot of the sky where I can composite, you know, a, a mushroom cloud in the distance. And that's gonna add a whole lot to the image. And I know I'm, 
you know, make it easier for myself, depending on how I want to track the shot and how I want to create it in Blender or some other um, computer program that I want to use. I, I can just lock picture. I can get the image the way that I want it to, you know, with the pacing and whatever. So I know I only have to get a quality render for this many shots and they're only this long. And then maybe I can go composite stuff and the fusion side of Resolve or, or an After Effects or something else. And there's only relatively, there, there's less FX work to do. And uh, I've simplified the process for myself. That's it. All right. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Jacob. This has been Part-Time Film School. And uh, I'll see you next week.